Hello, welcome to today's video. We are now starting in chapter six of our keyboard musicianship, book one. And this is pages, we're going to be over going over 213 and 214. So we have a lot of things to cover here. We're going to be talking about secondary chords at the beginning of this chapter here. So it talks about the opening bars of Jerome Kern's Look for the Silver Lining. Now, before we talk about secondary chords and primaries, let's go ahead and play a little bit of this and listen to what it sounds like. Here we go. So as we can see, we had an interesting accompaniment, the bass notes in the left hand, right hand was playing some of the harmony along with the melody. Difficult to play, but not impossible. It says here that the harmony is spread between the hands in piano style. And it says here to examine the harmony in the second beat of bar one. When we say second beat, this is in cut time. So beat number two is gonna be the second half note in the melody. That's beat number two. Um, let's see, um, the first beat of bar two, just right there, G minor. So the second beat is D minor and then G minor. Okay. Um, let's not talk about the tight notes. These chords, are known as secondary chords. Another way to label these chords is by the Roman numerals. So the D minor in the key of F, so there's F right there, there's one tonic, two, three, four, five, six. So that is the sixth scale degree. And then G minor is gonna be two. Notice that both chords are minor. Okay. And both of them are obviously minor chords in a major key of F major. It says here these chords are also known as substitute chords. Okay. The sixth chord is a substitute for one. And the two chord is a substitute for four. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what that means. It says here that D minor shares two common tones that F major has. So if we have here, so we have an F major right there. So we see we have F, A, and C, D minor, we take out the C, those are the two common tones. And then for G minor, play B flat, two common tones right there, B flat and D. Now let's go ahead and look at the bottom of the page here. Let's see if I can get you a better look. It says here that we have analyzed and been playing primary chords. The primary chords are one, tonic, four, subdominant, and then of course five, dominant. And it's a little blurry, sorry about that. So primary chords are one, four, and five. Those are the main chords that we always play in music. And then the secondary chords are the other ones. Two, which is called supertonic. Three, mediant. And then six, submediant. Okay? Notice that the secondary chords, chords that are sometimes used as substitutes for majors, are all minor. D minor, two. E minor, three. A minor six. 
Now, let's review the words for each skill degree. And I would like for you to please commit these words to memory. One is tonic. Two is supertonic. Three is mediant. Four is subdominant. Five is dominant. Six is submediant. Now for this seven, we have two examples or two ways of playing seven. The one that I am playing now in the key of C major is called leading tone. A leading tone is a half step below the tonic. So as you can see, the white key to the white key half step. Or if we do not have a half, a half, a half step, we may have a whole step, which is a whole step away, which would be B flat. And this would be known as the subtonic. So if it was a whole step away from the tonic, it's called subtonic. If it's a half step away, it's called leading tone. So please remember those. And of course, remember primaries are one, four, and five. Secondaries are two, three, and six. But what about seven? What would seven be? Seven may be either or, and that's a little bit more advanced of a discussion. Maybe that discussed in a later video. Let's now go to page 214. As look for the silver lining continues, another important substitute secondary chord is used. And of course, that was the mediant note, as we'd learned there, mediant chord, A minor in the key of F major. Let's go ahead and listen to that. Mediant, A minor, would be a substitute for which chord? Well, let's take a look to see which chord in the key of F major has the most. Maybe that one. Or, of course, maybe the tonic itself. Now we're going to talk about some chord progressions, and these are going to be added to your tool belt for accompaniment styles. This chord progression, first of all, we are going to think about a familiar chord progression, and that is one, four, five, one. that very familiar, which happens to be a progression in many types of songs, we want to gradually add the secondary chords or different uh, inversion for the one. Let's go ahead now and talk about this one, six, four, two, one, six, four, five, seven, one progression. Okay. We're going to go ahead and play this progression once. And then we're going to start talking about something we've already mentioned previously, which is voice leading. Okay, so let's go ahead and play it once. Here we go. Okay, very good. Okay, so here we have the term voice leading and a very wonderful definition written by the Berkeley College of Music that I found online. It says here that voice leading refers to the way in which individual voices move from chord to chord. The best voice leading occurs when all individual voices, when we say voices, where we're talking about the notes, 
Voices meaning soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. That's what they refer to when they say voices, which is a reference to choir singing or choral singing. When all individual voices move smoothly. Now, what does smoothly mean? You can achieve this by moving between chords using the same note, which is a common tone, like if the note, if the chord C major and then F major, the common tone would be C. Or moving up or down by a second in the inner voices of the chord. Now we're going to talk about this in a little bit as we go through our examples again. I want us to really think about that definition because it helps us to understand why voice leading is important. Okay. As a pianist, voice leading is quite essential when we want to play accompaniments two rules or two things I like to say as a pianist, we like to move as little as possible or we want to do as little work as possible. So let's talk a little bit about this first chord progression. It says here that only one voice changes in the right hand from one to six. And remember in our definition, to achieve smooth voice leading, we usually, when we move in the inner voices, or when we move by a second, up or down, we want to usually do it in the inner voices. So the inner voices would be these two here. So C major, that's for obviously in first inversion. And then we have A minor in second inversion. So we move from G to A, a second up. In the right hand, excuse me, the left hand, simply serves as the base of the chord. This is being doubled, obviously, but that's okay because when we are learning how to read chords, we want to look at both the notes in the right hand and the left, thus naming our chord C major. I would encourage you to write out the chord symbols above. The next chord after A minor, let's now go ahead and talk about the common tones. We have these two common tones here. We like that when moving from chord to chord with smooth voice leading. And then after A minor, the next chord, which is four of C major, we move to F major. The common tones were the top two notes here, A and C. Now usually it's the inner voices that want to move for smooth, but it's perfectly fine for the lower note or the higher note to move. In this case, we moved from E to up to F by a second, and that was smooth because it only moved by a second. Okay. Next, we go to D minor, which is the two of F ma of C major. The common tones were the bottom two notes, and we moved once again up a second, and that's a smooth transition right there. Now, in this chord progression, unfortunately, we are going to have some kind of disjunct movement here because we are going to be playing from one position to an entirely different hand position. Notice from this chord here, D minor, to the next chord, which is the 164, there are no common tones. So this is, this is smooth in that it moves by a second but not smooth, that, that there are no common tones. But unfortunately, we cannot always be perfect. Sometimes we will never ha have common tones, but most of the time we will. Okay, so this is 164, and thankfully, we have one common tone, and we moved in to by two seconds. So these are the outer voices. And then we have the G there, which is the tonic, or excuse me, the root of the chord. Once again, a common tone of G and going back to C major. And then we end it just as we started with C major in the right hand in first inversion. Okay, so let's memorize that chord progression played this way. There are other ways to play this chord progression. 
but we're going to learn it this way first. The next chord progression is one, four, two, or two, seven, one. It says this formula progression is often used in American popular music. The two, seven chord formed by adding another third on top becomes important in our study of American popular songs. And we'll also learn how to play this in all keys. So let's go ahead and start first here. C major one, and then we have six, two, seven, or sorry, not, not seven, but this is five. added a five there for some reason. I thought we were just going to do two. Let's listen to what it sounds like without the five, just for curiosity's sake. Hmm. So I'm guessing that they meant to put a five in that progression because we need a dominant, okay? Two cannot really serve as a dominant in this case, but if we added the C, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a, a five into that progression. Now we have here the five, the two seven, which means you bring down D, which is the tonic, sorry, not tonic, but the root, down to the seventh, and that's the C. And then we have dominant chord, which is a seven, and then back to one. Okay, very good. So let's get to know these two chord progressions. Let's get to know them well in this way. We will learn how to play them in other ways eventually, but let's memorize this way first and learn how to play them in all keys. Okay, so thanks for listening today. Let's get practicing. We will see you in the next lesson. Bye.